So I'm here to talk to you about testing mindset in the microservices world. Unlike the previous talk, it's not going to be that technical. Um, not because I don't believe that testing is technical, but it's just a different angle, really. Um, so before we begin, let me introduce myself. I've got 11 years experience in QA, testing, engineering, whatever you want to call it. Um, so throughout that time, I've been a test analyst, QA analyst, QA architect, uh, QA whatever. I'm now a lead QA. Um, I'm a husband and a father to two kids, and I'm unfortunately a Sunderland fan, although we have had some good news recently, but I won't bore you with that. Um, that's my Twitter and my blog, although I'm not as active as I probably should be. Um, so before we begin, I'd like to just discuss why we test. Um, this is open to interpretation from anyone, really. Does anybody have any ideas why we test? Anyone want to give any suggestions? Fun bugs, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, sorry? Mitigate risk. Mitigate yeah. risk, ooh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so there's, there's four things, or four or five things here, can't remember. Um, the first one is to break illusions about the product. So we've all been there. Develop, as I said, this code works fine, but when we come and touch it and we find bugs. This can piss developers off, but you have to remember that we didn't put the bugs there. We immediately found them, right? And I'd much rather us find them than the developer or even the public find them themselves in production. So that's kind of why, that's one of the reasons why we test. We find problems in the product. So kind of similar to breaking illusions, but this is more about finding problems, reporting them to the people that need to know, and letting them make the decisions. To make unknowns known. So we can only test what we know. We can't test things that we don't know. So it's very important to ask the questions and kind of uncover any unknowns and use that to inform what testing we do. To find the black swan. Has anyone heard about the story about the black swan? So many, many years ago, talking about probably 100 years ago maybe, maybe more, maybe less, nobody believed, well everyone believed that swans were white. It wasn't until people travelled to Australia and they found hundreds of thousands of black swans that people thought, Oh, our assumptions were wrong there. There are swans that are black. And it's kind of similar to turkeys, right? So if you were a turkey, you'd be coming up to Thanksgiving, you'd be fed every day. And you'd be fed loads of food. You think life is absolutely great. You'd be running around in the fields, playing with other animals maybe, I don't know, until that day comes when you're killed for Thanksgiving. So if you were to use that past data, you'd kind of assume, yeah, everything's great. I'm going to live forever. I'm going to have this lifestyle forever until that day comes when you're killed. So we kind of, as testers, we need to stay, bear that in mind and use that, know that not everything is perfect. Don't make assumptions about things based on past data. Sure, it can guide you, but don't live by it. And finally, we test to understand, we test to understand the product and we use that to inform our testing. So to help us do that, we have what is often banned a testing mindset, but what actually is a testing mindset. So I'm going to cover some of the things that I think make up a testing mindset, but it's not everything, so don't like hold me to it, please. Um, so we have, well, first off, actually, so in terms of the brain, is everyone aware of the left and the right brain? So the left brain is your logical brain, the right brain is kind of your creative, your emotive brain. So critical thinking very much lies in the left brain. It's a logical thing, it's a binary thing. It's kind of like, what, what can go wrong in this product? It's having that critical thinking about the product, not necessarily accepting what everyone says about it. Planning as well, you know, that's kind of a logical thing to do. How can I test this and so forth? Critical distance, collaboration, experience, and creative exploration. We'll go into a bit more detail about what these are. So in terms of critical thinking, we definitely, as testers, need to think critically about software development so we don't get fooled. So like the, like the turkey, really, so if everything tells us it works, we need to damn well prove that it works. That is our job as testers, right? We need to have that critical thinking. Um, assumptions are dangerous. We all know what happens when you assume. You make an ass out of you and me. Um, planning. So I'm not just talking about test plans. We've all been there. We wrote loads of test plans, made up of test cases. But we need to know full well what we're testing, when we're testing it, and how we're going to test it. If we don't know that, then who knows what we put into production. And similarly, I like to think of us as the headlights of the engineering team. 
We've got an eye on future items that are coming up in the next sprint, maybe, or whatever methodology you're using. Um, we are aware of that, what challenges it may bring to the team, and kind of how we can tackle them challenges. Critical distance, so we've all been there, right? We've all been so embedded in something that we don't necessarily see the flaws. We think, oh, this is absolutely awesome because we've worked and we've put our heart and blood, blood and soul into this. But let me tell you a story. Um, when I was younger, my now wife, so we've been together a while, she, I wrote her CV. Um, we sent it out to probably like 20 to 30 places and then she read the CV. Her phone number was wrong. So there was no way for these companies to get in touch with her but because I was so embedded in writing that CV, I didn't see it. To be honest, that makes a case for maybe shifting less left. She could have maybe reviewed the CV before she sent it out. But that, that was all my fault, apparently. But never mind. Um, but it's, it's very much why I get people to read important emails before I send them. So who's ever written an important email, sends it, and then realizes, oh crap, I said something wrong or something like that. You are too embedded in writing an email. You don't necessarily see the flaws. You don't see the spelling mistakes. Um, and finally, just don't be that cheerleader for the product. Don't just go, hey, everything's great. The developer said it's going to work. Don't do that. That is a bad path to go down. Don't let the developers drive the testing that you do. You should be driving the testing that you do and the testing for the team. So collaboration is key, right? So we work with other teams in the microservices world. We work with many other teams you need to think of the bigger picture, right? You need to communicate with other teams, you need to find out what changes they're making, how will it impact you, because otherwise you're going to end up in a bad, bad place. You can also find out you may have a problem, right? So if you work with other people who have faced that same problem, they may have solved it and you can reuse that same steps. And because we are specialists in testing, we know what's happened before, we know what we think might happen, and we can plan for it. We are customer focused, right? And I'm not just talking about the end user, but I'm talking about clients who may consume us and so forth. We know what they're expecting, so we can bear that in mind when doing our testing. And we're also aware of how certain biases can influence people. So let's use that to our advantage. And finally, we need to do more creative exploration. So we thrive on asking questions. My daughter thrives on asking questions. She asks why, why, why? We need to do more of that. Um, we need to know more information about the product. We need to use this information to our advantage and uncover any of the unknowns that we may not, well, we don't know, right? Um, and we learn new things quickly because we do want to test software better. We're all here tonight because we care. And because we care, we are one step ahead of probably 90% of the people that we work with. Um, and I saw a good advert yesterday on the tube, um, and it was, um, don't be the tourist, be the explorer. And it's about going off that beaten path. Don't necessarily follow test cases step by step. Have a think about what you can do to kind of explore the software a bit more. Kind of try and break it, you know? Don't necessarily just bash the keyboard, be creative and think about how you can do that. So we're also here to talk about microservices. Um, there's probably many definitions of microservices. Who wants to have a stab at their definition of what a microservice is? Don't jump, please. Anyone? Got it. Well, microservices uh, uh, well, services small enough to be uh, <coughs> the services the smallest possible so that we could use them together on the same page, basically. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's probably many, many different definitions of microservices, probably not a right or wrong one. Um, but I've kept it really simple. Um, a service that does one thing and does it well, like, that's probably the most simplest definition that I could give of a microservice. Um, if you want an expert's definition, that's Martin Fowler's definition. Um, I won't read it word for word, but it goes into a bit more detail about what it is. Um, so we spoke about what microservices are, but there are many benefits of doing microservices, or otherwise we wouldn't be here tonight, and otherwise we wouldn't all be using them in some form or another. So one of the benefits is independence. So the teams are independent, like, free to kind of choose how they develop something. The, the contract that they create is down to them. They have the autonomy to kind of do what they want in that regards. 
And similarly, they are free to choose what technology they use. They're not tied to the technology of a whole monolithic architecture. If they find a new tech and it solves a problem, they're free to implement it. Um, and testing. So when it comes to testing microservices, it's not exactly, it's a lot simpler than testing something massive, right? You're, you're testing small changes, you're testing incremental changes, and it's about kind of zeroing in on these changes and being able to test them to the best of your ability to kind of give you confidence that the software does what, you, what it should do. And the last one that you can see is environments. So previously, when working in a modern monolithic architecture, you'd need to have everything deployed to that environment to test it. With a microservice, you, you just need that service deployed and any, any um, dependencies that you may or may not have. So you can also scale these, these environments a lot simpler, these microservices. You haven't got to scale the entire stack. You can serve the services individually. You haven't got to worry about uh, scaling everything. It's a lot cheaper to run. I apologize if this is all like not new for you, but it's good just to get like a base, in, a line in the sand, shall we say. Um, speed. Speed in terms of um, development, in terms of deployment, it's a lot quicker to kind of deploy a small microservice than it is um, when deploying a monolithic service. Previously, where when I worked, we would take two to four weeks to deploy. We're now doing daily deployments, so it's kind of a good, good trade-off. And it's a lot simpler in terms of analyzing and understanding where things go wrong, because you haven't got to worry about a whole stack of logs. Generally, the logs are kind of down to that, that service. So this is still great. Um, is it too good to be true? Like microservices do have so many benefits, um, but there are challenges. But I personally feel the role of the test has adapted or changed, or at least it should kind of adapt to tackle these challenges. And we're gonna look at some of the challenges just now. Um, so I've got four. There are probably many, many more. Um, these are the four top ones that have affected me. So systems integration testing is one of the big challenges. Um, I'm not necessarily, in an ideal world, arguably you wouldn't need systems integration testing for microservices, but I don't live in an ideal world, and as testers, arguably none of us should live in an ideal world. Um, but there are challenges around this kind of defining what, what uh, other services that you integrate with, what versions they are gonna be, where are they deployed, what test data you're gonna use for that systems integration testing. It's a bull's ache to kind of plan that and organize that. Um, when it comes to testing, so contracts change. Contracts change quite a bit. Kind of, it's well enough, hard enough being aware of these changes, but being, a, being able to test them is another matter. Um, thinking of the bigger picture. So teams that work in microservices tend to focus on their own microservices. They don't necessarily think of other people that may be consuming them. They become very much us and them. And finally, that last one is tech. So I had to find that. Um, so tech, so I said teams are free to choose their own technologies, but in terms of being able to kind of move people around teams, that can cause a challenge. Not everyone's kind of skilled in everything that they, in all the different technologies, but it's kind of like, how do we manage that? That's a small trade-off for teams being able to have the autonomy to choose whatever tech they want. So, there are many facets of a tester's mindset and skill set that can and should be used to tackle these challenges. So we're just going to go into them and kind of understand how they can help. So if we look at the first challenge with regards to systems integration testing. So this requires deployments of multiple independent components owned by many different teams. And then there's a question about what about test data and, and this is a nightmare. So in terms of the testing mindset, if we think back to what we had before, so we have planning. So applying the test of mindset of planning, we can identify when are things going to be ready to be tested, who do I need to speak to about these changes, what needs to happen, how can we get test data in the environment. By thinking about all these things, and as a tester, these are things that we should be talking about and thinking about, we can kind of help tackle that. In terms of critical distance, by being unaware of the other team service, you, you, you automatically have that critical distance. You're not embedded in that team. You can challenge them and kind of say, what about this, what about that? And then there's also experience. So we know what test data is needed for a live-like experience, and that can kind of channel in to that. So in terms of challenge two, so for testing, contracts are changing all the time as teams implement new features. Becoming aware of these changes is difficult, let alone testing them. 
But then there's also the challenge about what should be stopped. I'm testing things in my test environment. What needs to be stopped and how do we stop it? There's obviously the idea of stubs is great, but when the stub becomes so complex that it's almost like its own living service, that's a challenge in itself. Um, so we need to work, think about collaboration. We need to work with the teams, understand what the contract changes are, understand when they're going to be ready to be tested, and then we can take it from there. Critical thinking. So team B may say that their tests do this, but we need to make sure that their tests do do that. We need to make, understand what their tests are doing so that we don't duplicate the tests. And then creative exploration. I mean, we've all heard of contract tests. Can we implement something like that to kind of tackle this? So the bigger picture, teams work independently can sometimes lose sight of the bigger picture. This happens a lot. Um, you become so entrenched in delivering your features, delivering your service, that you lose sight of actually what it is your service is meant to be doing and all the other services that work together. Um, so in terms of experience, we know what the customer impact is. What other teams does this change affect? We can start asking these questions. We can work closer together with other teams. There are ways we can communicate. So there are many ways. We have Facebook at work, we have Slack, we have Skype for Business, we have Skype, we have emails, we have face-to-face. -face. Choose a form of communication, stick to that, find out what works for you and go with that. And then it's critical distance. What's the bigger impact of these changes? Have people thought about that? Ask these questions, it's important. Um, and finally, technology. So in terms of different teams and different tech, moving people from team to team is challenging. But then there's also the support aspect. Once your service goes into production, someone's got to support it. It may be your team, but it may also be another support team. How do you, how do you relay the knowledge that you have about that service to the support team? So again, make collaboration, work with the support teams, make them aware of your services, make them aware of the logs, make them aware of the monitoring that you have in place so that when things go wrong, and things will go wrong, they know how to support it. Creative exploration, you know, learn the new tech. Don't be scared if someone says about this new technology and you're going to be joining that team. Learn it. That's what we're here for. And critical thinking. Do we need to use this technology? What problem is this tech trying to solve? Right, you mentioned about SpecFlow. That's a great example. What problem is that solving? Right? SpecFlow is not BDD. People confuse it all the time. But just ask these questions and kind of make sure that the team understand the tech and make sure it's actually solving a problem. So this is a testing mindset to me. There's probably other aspects, but as a tester or a QA engineer, whatever it is we're calling ourselves these days, we are a valuable piece of a software team. We care about the quality culture, but we also have to test, right? We have to do all of these things, but we also have to test the software. Um, so there are many challenges in any form of software development. I'm not going to lie. Otherwise, anyone could do it. But whether we're working with microservices or whatever, we need to continuously look for ways in which our unique position as testers and the mindset and skills that we have can help us and our team overcome them.